Good afternoon, everybody. Happy Taco Tuesday. Hashtag Taco Tuesday. <laughs> My name is Tracy Childs. I'm with uh, Veg Appeal, and I also work with the Dr. Joel Furman Eat to Live Retreat here in San Diego. That's been a recent development. I've been having a really good time chefing. I wanted to show you some of the tricks of the trade and some of the things that um, I've been doing. It's so much fun working with vegan food. Um, you know, it's compassionate and uh, cruelty free and all that great stuff. So, um, so here we are in San Diego and we have a carnitas recipe. So let me tell you, um, well actually I'll tell you after we get them in the oven. I have an interesting story about why I started looking up these recipes. Um, you know, just Google anything and you can find amazing vegan recipes. Just that's your tip, okay? So, um, so this one uses portobello mushrooms and um, it's kind of a little bit of a process, but it's super fun. So um, here's your portobello mushrooms and these ones are a little small. I got the recipe from veggiesdontbite.com just for my simple quick um, look for a vegan carnitas recipe. Not that I ever ate carnitas when I ate meat, but um, I guess people like it a lot. So uh, I like the mushroom version, that's for sure. So um, this is really an interesting technique. So you can take your mushrooms, you can kind of um, start to tear them apart and make some carnitas out of it. So let's see here, I wanted to show you, yeah, so this is a nut one stage after we've um, started to tear them apart and they're sitting here with a little bit of salt, but let me show you. Um, and this is the next stage too, right here. Okay, after you've let them sit and drain out some of the water. So mushrooms do are super healthy. Um, when at the, at, the, at the Eat to Live retreat, we talk about G-bombs. Um, greens, berries, onions, mushrooms, and beans and seeds. So those are your G-bombs, and those are your best foods for preventing cancer. Not that they're the only ones you should eat to prevent cancer, but a plant-based diet is the best way to prevent cancer. And um, some people reverse it with uh, using a plant-based diet too. So, uh, so that's wonderful news. So, um, so what you could do is here's your portobello mushroom, and you can, if you want, you can take out the gills. If you, you know, they kind of might get in the way, so you can just kind of scrape those out. I'll put them in this bowl here, making a mess. All right. There we go. And then you can take off the stem. And usually, actually, I, I put the stem in my broth bag and I make broth with it, which of course uh, extracts the nutrition from it um, and includes it in your broth, which is cool. But uh, in this recipe, they're actually really cool. They shred up really nicely. So you can shred them like with a fork, you know, just kind of like pull them apart. And then you've got a nice texture. There we go. And then you can put them in your colander. And then with the, the cap, you can um, start using a fork on that too and start shredding away. And just kind of wanted to break it into um, some nice pieces. The idea is to create some shreds that you can kind of drain of the excess water so they get more of a chewier uh, consistency, okay? So this could be a fun, you know what? I teach cooking and nutrition, so I love classes like this where people can actually get in and each person can have a mushroom and we can all combine and, um, and have fun in the kitchen. So this is, I, I'm really happy to have found this recipe. Okay, so, and then we can do these ones too. These ones shred up fast. So then, after you shred up your mushrooms, you can put them in your colander, and then you can put a little bit of salt. Well, there, we don't use salt at the retreat, but uh, yeah, we do here at Shea, Tracy, and Steven sometimes. Just a little, I don't like a lot of salt, but, um, the salt is going to uh, kind of get the 
the, uh, the mushrooms to start weeping out their liquid. So this is really just a tiny bit and I already put a little bit on. So just kind of like toss it with a little bit of salt. I'm sure a little bit goes a long way. So the recipe called for three quarters of a teaspoon, but you surely don't need to use that much. Okay. Uh, Maya says she'll be over in 15 minutes. <laughs> Come on over, Maya. <laughs> All right, um, here we go. So this is gonna just sit for a little while. And while that's happening, you can cut up your onion. You can use uh, other veggies as well if you wanna make more of a fajita. You can um, make some peppers or something like that. So just, people kind of like shy away from cutting up too many veggies. It's really not difficult to do, you just, have, everybody has their onion technique. Mine's like just really quick and dirty. <laughs> I just like them. I'm, I'm cutting up so many onions all the time, so this is my really quick way of doing it. I just kind of slice along here. Always put your cut side down. Cut it in half. Don't try to don't try to cut an onion uh, with the round side down. That's dangerous. All right. So now like that and just kind of hold it together again. All right, so there we go. That's one half of it. And oh, we're not gonna put it in there yet because I'm gonna wait and drain that. But it really seriously uh, sits there with the salt for about as long as it takes to cut up your onion. about these vegan carnitas. Okay, now, now this has been sitting here and I can tell the texture has changed already. I just thought I'd put a plate underneath. You can see some liquids already come out. And so then you can just start wringing them out. <laughs> this is so fun. You wring them out. And then Getting, I'm not gonna say meaty, getting a texture and a look. <laughs> Some people get really offended when you say that something that's plant-like is meat-like. I don't know. I haven't had meat in so long that um, it really doesn't matter to me, but some people really love that. And, you know, saying that and others really get, don't like it. Doesn't matter. It's all good. It's just plants, plant food. So you can see that we lost some liquid here. Still crying. Okay, and then if you let it sit longer, it'll dry out even longer like this one did. So now you can put all those. If you wanted to um, reduce the salt, you could probably rinse it and then really wring it out again. There really isn't much on there. Okay, so now we can put in our onion. You'd think if you cut up onions like three times a day, you'd stop crying from them, but that's not the case. Okay, so now if you want to add a little more flavor to it, you can add some orange juice. What I do is I cut it down the bottom. These are, um, are down through the middle. These are uh, Valencia's. And just take out the seeds like that. And then you can just squeeze, kind of just hold it like this. Actually, I'm just gonna use one half because that's a lot. And then you can just add your spices. So these, this is some oregano. This is some, I always add turmeric and black pepper. Turmeric is very anti-inflammatory. This is some chili powder. Cumin. Smoked paprika. 
and some garlic powder. You can add fresh garlic, garlic powder. It's been sitting there a while, so it kind of stuck in there. You already got your hands dirty, so just go ahead, go ahead and go for it here. Toss all that. Okay, now you can have your sheet covered with parchment paper. The oven is preheated already for 400. Make a nice layer over here. Okay, so just get it all spread out. In the oven. I'm gonna um, pop the oven up a little bit higher to hopefully get it done faster. All right. 120, 425. Okay. Excuse me for a second. <laughs> Still crying. You can film the mess there. <laughs> All right. So what I do with these onions, like different parts of the onion and um, ends of celery and things like that, what I do is I um, I make broth. I make uh, veggie broth and I put them all in the freezer. So I'll keep these to the side. And you know you could use this too. Any parts of the vegetables that you would normally throw away or compost, you can actually save them and make a free vegetable broth, I call it. Scrappy vegetable broth. All right, so while that's in the oven, we can get our uh, toppings ready. And so we have some Purple cabbage, purple cabbage. So purple cabbage again, uh, just quarter it. Don't try cutting it like this. Make sure you put the cut side down and just start cutting like that. Now you have this and you can just go through and cut it. And this makes such a nice crunchy, um, colorful topping for your tacos. Okay, and then you can put some tomato in it. I usually like to use a knife that has a little bit of serration to it for that. Again, what do you do? Cut side down and just start moving through. Oh, when I was at Jimbo's yesterday, I kind of cheated a little bit. I got um, some mango salsa. So this looks really good to put on our tacos. So fresh salsa. You can make this so easily yourself too. Looks like it has some uh, cucumbers in it or zucchini. I don't know. Interesting. Nice. All right, so uh, the other topping I wanna have is some um, guacamole or just some mashed up avocado basically. So um, 
find a nice ripe avocado and um, don't get it too ripe, you know, just, I hope this is a beautiful one. Let's see, it feels like it is. Just wanted to give a little bit, okay? And then this is also, this is a really handy dandy little knife to go cut through. All right, oh, just a little bit of stuff we'll discard. There we go. Okay, now here's my trick with this is you don't want this to turn brown. Of course, we're gonna eat it right away, so it's not that big of a deal. But um, there's a couple of things that you can do. So if you wanted to keep it like chunks, I just found out from my co one of my co-chefs, um, Jackie Donaldson, and she goes by uh, at Celtic Vegan on Instagram, and I go by Tracy Teaches Vegan on Instagram if you wanna follow either of us. And then the other chef is Chloe, uh, Chloe's Clean Cuisine. So we are all oil-free, uh, low-fat, um, well, we use nuts and seeds, so not as low-fat, but um, whole food, plant-based chefs. And uh, anyways, from Jackie, I found out that you could fill this with some ice water, or you could take these and set them in ice water, and they keep up their shape really nicely. So what I do is, uh, if we're gonna just make guacamole, is um, don't mash first. So you just keep your chunks and then add your lime juice. And then you can add, if you're gonna put a little spice, spice or something like that, you can add that. I'm using spike seasoning. This is a great little all-purpose seasoning. There's also salt-free available. And you can then start to mash it with the juice. You can also make a nice dressing by blending up this with vinegar or lime and it will also hold its color. So this should help it hold its color if you mash it with the liquid instead of before. All right. Okay, so there's that. So these are our toppings ready to go. Our tacos. Okay. Still, the onion's still affecting me. <laughs> All right, let's clean up again. Oh, there's. Oh, that's the one we're getting rid of. Okay. the vegan carnitas cook for? Um, it says 30 minutes in the recipe. Actually, honestly, I'm just trying this recipe out. So last night, I wanted to tell you after it got in the oven, last night we made um, carnitas for the guests. And it was one of the guests' birthdays and she really, really loves Mexican food. And so we, um, we actually, chef, made, chef Chloe made them and she used chanterelle mushrooms. Has anybody ever used those before? I hadn't, and so I was really excited to um, get in there and try those. Now, those are not as available, of course, so but you can re easily get portobello. So I was excited to try with portobello just to make sure that we can all enjoy this anytime we want. All right, so... We'll check it probably uh, right after we make our dessert and see. Hopefully it'll be kind of ready to go and show how it, how it looks. Um, I wanted to make a dessert. This is something that I have been perfecting at the retreat. Um, we wanted a really good chia pudding recipe for the guests. Uh, chia pudding is so great because it's, um, it's got your omega-3 fatty acids from the chia seeds. So you can just, chia seeds at Sprouts, they have them at 
Trader Joe's. They have them at a lot of the stores nowadays. They're cha 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 cha, and they're really super common now. But they were something that I'd never even heard of eating before. And um, when you can buy chia pudding that's already made up, but why do that when you can easily make it? It's so so easy. And this recipe actually kind of speeds up the process because it does take time for the chia seeds to get absorbed into the liquid. And so, so this recipe actually takes a couple shortcuts so that it can be ready uh, sooner because we need that stuff to be ready quick at the retreat. So, um, so anyways, this is our recipe to try or two that's been perfected. So uh, just some water. So a lot of recipes usually will call for some kind of plant-based milk and you can use that here. But um, we like to make all of our milks from scratch. Uh, so instead of buying them already made and on, sitting on the shelf. So what we use is um, hemp seeds to make milk. So these are hemp, uh, these are hemp hearts. And uh, this one's available. These are available at all those stores I mentioned before. And uh, you just kind of add those to your water. And now when that blends, that's going to become milk, right? So just one spice. This is spiced uh, chia pudding. We're using cardamom. Where's my little cardamom package? Um, disappeared. Oh, there we are. Here's the cardamom package. It's a wonderful spice. If you don't like it or you don't have it, of course you can use cinnamon, um, you can use cacao powder in there, uh, all kinds of different things to flavor it up. But I really like the flavor of this, so we'll put that in there. And then we always sweeten with dates. So uh, this recipe calls for four Medjool dates. You can, if you don't have Medjool dates, you can use the smaller ones that are about half the size and you just put twice as many, but this one has four. So don't forget, I've done this before on accident. <laughs> don't forget to take the pit out, all right? And if you keep your, uh, you use, we use a lot of dates, so we just keep them shelf stable, go through them a lot. Um, get them out and let them warm up if they're in the refrigerator and then they'll be really super easy to pit. And the original recipe called for the whole half a cup of, um, Coconut. So co coconut is also going to mix with the water to become milk-like and creamy. Um, but we'll just put like a quarter cup of it. And then we'll toast up the rest for the topping. Coconut's uh, amazing. It's high. In, it tastes great, but it is high in saturated fat. So, um, you know, you would just want to measure and, and use the amount, uh, smaller amounts of that than you use of the other uh, high fat plant foods. It's really the one of the only ones that has so much uh, saturated fat. So uh, at the retreat we use um, vanilla powder which is more antioxidant but I don't have any so we're using some just vanilla extract and some here's our chia seeds. Now here's the trick. We're just going to use like half of the chia seeds in here. We still want to have a nice uh, texture like almost like a tapioca pudding um, and if you honestly, if you blended them all up, it would probably be too goopy. The texture wouldn't be so good. So what we're doing is blending in about half of them and then keeping the other half. Okay. So now we can just blend up all of that. of the chia seeds, not the, not the coconut, because the coconut we're going to um, toast. So let me get that, let me get that here. Kathy Baker says hi from Estero, Florida. Hello. <laughs> Hello, Florida. Hello, Kathy. All right, so um, 
put it back on variable. And now we don't want to blend it um, smoothly or to smooth. We're just going to blend it to mix it. This is my little shortcut. Just, just, just kind of pulse it in. Mix in those chia seeds. Ah, I know what happened. I had it a little bit too high. That's why. Now you can put it in your bowl. Okay, so then just mix it up and then you just chill it for uh, an hour or so and um, it's going to be a nice pudding. And, you know, it evens better overnight, but, you know, it will be fine and um, less crunchy. So you can see that all these chia seeds are still going to be crunchy. And now you can see the difference um, right over here. This one's one I made yesterday. And then the chia seeds have uh, gotten themselves all nice and expanded out. And it's a really nice pudding, like a rice pudding kind of a thing. You could actually put a little bit of a grain in here, too, to make a rice pudding. Um, so let's see. come on over. We'll sh we'll toast our coconut. So see how easy this is. Okay, so you just get your hot pan. If you're not going to watch it, you can put it just really low, but if you're here with it, you can just keep um, turning it till they start to turn brown. And they make a nice, crunchy, crunchy, lovely, lovely topping for things. So super easy to do. Everybody thinks you're a gourmet cook, so there you go. Some of them are turning brown. See that? And then once they start to brown, it happens pretty quickly. Another thing I really love uh, is some pumpkin seeds, raw pumpkin seeds, and you can toast those too. Second, we'll turn it way down and get our tortillas. While we have the flame on, we can uh, toast up our tortillas and show you how to make those and have those ready. Okay. Let me toast up our tortillas while we're over here. So you can turn the flame up a little bit. If you don't have uh, electric, I mean, if you don't have gas, um, yeah. <laughs> if you don't have gas, uh, you can just put these in the toaster oven. Um, I can't think of a, another way to get the nice toasty um, appearance and flavor. You can just put it in the you know toaster oven or in the oven or um, wrap them up, put them in the microwave to heat them up. Anybody have any good ideas if you don't have gas? How about a candle? Just wave them over a candle many, many, many times. <laughs> so I just put it right on the grate here. You can kind of watch it. It starts to like bubble up a little bit. tacos for lunch. I do, I do. Vegan tacos. Alright, I'm going to be ready 
to, uh, to check our carnitas here soon, our vegan mushroom carnitas. And you can do a Mexican hat dance while this is happening, you know? <laughs> no, I'm not going to. <laughs> Ordinarily, I would. <laughs> All right, here you go. Actually, I'll do one if the carnitas are ready. <laughs> I don't have a hat, though. All right. They're still a little steamy. Um, I'll t I'm going to top the... Uh, you know what I'm going to do as a little trick is just to put it on broil a little bit while I do a Mexican hat dance and top our dessert. Okay? Hey! Ole! 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 <laughs> okay. Make sure you dance while things are on broil because you don't want to burn them, right? So make sure you dance or do something where you're gonna remember and be so out of breath, you'll be glad to stop and take it out. Make it a short dance. <laughs> make it a short dance. <laughs> yeah, if you're in really good shape, maybe do something else, I don't know. Um, oh, burpees, that's what doctor, <laughs> I'm not gonna do burpees, but Dr. Uh, Dr. Gregor, I've seen him do that. All right, so here we go. We'll top our chia pudding with our coconut and berries, part of the G-bombs, right? And then, okay, really quick, quick, quick. Let's taste, let's taste this. Look at the, oh my God, how long the potatoes are doing? Make sure we didn't burn them. Ah, <sighs> still kind of steamy. Around a little bit. Look at that. Okay. They look ready to me. Well, you know what? I'm going to put them in. I forgot to tell you. I'm going to show you guys different type of taco shell. Here we go. We're in the again while we talk about the taco shells. So we have those tacos. And then you can also use collards. So I found out about collards when, oh, these are huge. Look how big these are. <laughs> they're kind of a little bit overwhelming they're so big, but you just take one out, put the rest away, out of the way. Don't we forget about what's broiling. Give them a dry. How are you gonna make a taco out of this? What do you think? Um, so what you can do is, this is, uh, I was in Washington DC and they had collard tacos on the menu at Fruitive. It's one of our favorite places to visit when I'm with my other Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine, PCRM chefs and our cooking instructors. And um, they have these on the menu, and I thought, wow, this is really cool. So this is how you can make a collared taco. So all of a sudden, what looked a little overwhelming has become fairly manageable, right? So you can just put your filling in here, and then your toppings, and then you can just roll it up if it's big like this, or if it's smaller, you know, it's really just a slider, slider taco. Okay, so we've got these available as well. Got these. These collards are 
amazingly healthy. Um, they are a very great, and they should, you know, it's part of the greens. You know, we've got our green G-bombs, greens. Um, our beans we could have in here too. We're not having them today, but you can have some beans. Make sure you eat beans every day. Uh, they get rid of um, excess toxins. They're very filling. They're high in fiber. They help, help you to, uh, get rid of cholesterol in your body. So they do all sorts of great things. Um, and then we have our uh, onions. <laughs> we're, we're really covering our G-bombs here in our meal today, which is really cool. All right, so here it is. Voila. Let's make a taco. Again, this can be put in your in with your green your uh, bag for making broth later. So we use a lot of vegetable broth in uh, whole food plant-based cooking. It's great for sauteing and things like that. You could have put some vegetable broth instead of orange juice on this. So um, yeah, vegetable broth is really wonderful to be able to keep on hand. So, all right, so here we can go with our taco. So you put in a little bit of your mushrooms. You can add some of your greens next or your uh, cabbage next, your crunch. Some tomatoes. mangoes. Mango's got some nice uh, raw onion in here too. On raw onion's really important. And to make it creamy, we have our guacamole. Okay, now let me show you a collard taco. So we have that taco, and then for the collard taco, for this, let's put this at the bottom, a little bit of this at the bottom because that's going to kind of hold things in place. You could also use hummus. I noticed at Fruit Tip they use hummus on all of theirs. We have some hummus. All right, and again now let's put some of our crunchies. Crunchy red cabbage. Tomatoes, some mango salsa, okay, and there. This is uh, something that doesn't really travel that well, but just eat it right away. So like I said, you can, um, you make it into a burrito kind of a thing roll up if you want to when they're big like this and um, you don't have to cook them or anything they're just really good they start to soften up really well when they get the um, the warm the warm fillings in there and uh, raw greens are really good you should have raw and cooked greens every day if you can and if you want you can add some hot sauce this is our, one of our favorites at least our sons <laughs> we always keep this around for him uh, habanero, chipotle habanero, and uh, just go basic with the tapatio, and who's tasting? Me? <laughs> All right, here we go. That's yummy. I'm getting the texture of the, the mushrooms here. Okay. All right, look. There they are. So it's your traditional, more your traditional corn tortilla. And always use corn tortillas over uh, the white um, flour tortillas.
You can use whole wheat tortillas. Ezekiel tortillas actually is one of our favorites because it's the uh, sprouted grains. So those are really good. All right. Mm. Super yummy. I do want to tell you one thing. I'll just, I'll just hold this up while I'm chewing. <laughs> we have a special going on. San Diego. Mm -hmm. For those of you in San Diego, anybody in Southern California though, might want to be doing this. And it's 10% off until January 1st. Uh, so what I do is I, I teach people nutrition, coaching, cooking, um, lessons, group classes. Lately I've been doing a lot of uh, private cooking classes. Uh, family recently um, signed up where the mom's vegan and the, um, the rest of the family isn't. And so she wanted me to introduce some new recipes to the family. So we did three sessions, or we signed up for three sessions. Um, another woman I recently worked with um, was uh, recently diagnosed with diabetes and not happy at all with the, um, the drugs that she's been taking. They, they, she had bad reactions to it. So we got her started. Um, her daughter actually bought some coaching with me. And what we did was we did uh, one session cooking where she brought, and we, cooked a whole bunch of things. She brought them home. She was ready for the weekend, really happy to just get started, jumpstart her plant-based diet. And then we kept in touch for every Friday uh, for about three, four weeks. And she would call, she'd tell me what she's been making. Um, I would uh, address any concerns she had and then send her more recipes and just give her just some encouragement. And then she has really gotten off to a great start. She's um, really feeling better and doing better and really super happy with her new lifestyle. So so that's what it's as simple as that to change your life actually. So it uh, doesn't have to cost you an arm or a leg. Um, I can really just get you get you going on that. Um, of course the first of the year is a great time to start a plant-based diet and so uh, with my organization Plant Diego we are starting Plant Start 2018 and we want to tell you about that. And that is uh, something that you know people in San Diego can do, but um, if you're not in San Diego, you can just follow along too, and we can send you. So just sign up at plantdiego.com. Uh, we don't have the registration ready yet, but we will, but there's going to be um, things going on all around the county, uh, all over, and um, it's gonna be just wonderful to get uh, together with uh, leaders and things like that. We have all kinds of leaders uh, in Plant Diego that um, will all just have a good time. And it's really about community. That's what Plant Diego is about, getting together with community, um, feeling good about yourself and your choices. Finding a lot of people, when they decide to do this, they don't know other people that are doing it. And so this is a way to make new friends. And we're going to have plenty of opportunities for people to do that in, during the month of January. But speaking about Southern California um, and my and these events and um, my coaching, I've had people come down from LA for for coaching, and I then and then I continue to text with them and give them coaching that question. So it's a great opportunity just to get a mentor and um, just have someone on your side. So. Thank you so much for joining me uh, on Lunch Break Live with Jane Bliss Mitchell. And everybody have wonderful, happy holidays. And coming up on the new year, it's going to be a great year.